In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate the memorial of St. Cecilia, Virgin, and Martyr. And we are blessed that in this Eucharistic celebration, we welcome and we are enjoined this morning by the students, faculty, staff of St. Scholastica's Academy from San Fernando, Pampanga. In behalf of our rector and vice-rector, we welcome you to our Mother Church. And to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who gladden us each year with the feast day of your handmaid, Saint Cecilia, grant, we pray, that what has been devoutly handed down concerning her may offer us examples to imitate and proclaim the wonders work in his servants by Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the second book of Maccabees. It happened that seven brothers with their mother were arrested and tortured with whips and scourges by the king to force them to eat pork in violation of God's law. Most admirable and worthy of everlasting remembrance was the mother who saw her seven sons perish in a single day, yet bore it courageously because of her hope in the Lord. Filled with a noble spirit that steered her warm womanly heart with manly courage, she exhorted each of them in the language of their ancestors with these words. I do not know how you came into existence in my womb. It was not I who gave you the breath of life, nor was it I who set in order the elements of which 
each of you is composed. Therefore, since it is the creator of the universe who shapes each man's beginning as he brings about the origin of everything, he, in his mercy, will give you back both breath and life, because you now disregard yourselves for the sake of his law. Antiochus, suspecting insult in her words, thought that he was being ridiculed. As the youngest brother was still alive, the king appealed to him, not with mere words, but with promises on oath, to make him rich and happy if he would abandon his ancestral customs. He would make him his friend and entrust him with high office. When the youth paid no attention to him at all, the king appealed to the mother, urging her to advise her boy to save his life. After he had urged her for a long time, she went through the motions of persuading her son. In derision of cruel tyrant, she leaned over close to her son and said in their native language, Son, have pity on me, who carried you in my womb for nine months, nursed you for three years, brought you up, educated, and supported you to your present age. I beg you, child, to look at the heavens and the earth and see all that is in them then you will know that God did not make them out of existing things. And in the same way, the human race came into existence. Do not be afraid of this executioner, but be worthy of your brothers and accept death, so that in time of mercy, I may receive you again with them. She had scarcely finished speaking, when the youth said, What are you waiting for? I will not obey the king's command. I obey the command of the law given to our fathers through Moses. But you who have contrived every kind of affliction for the Hebrews will not escape the hands of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. Hear, O Lord, a just suit. Attend to my outcry. Hearken to my prayer from lips without deceit. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. My steps have been steadfast in your paths. My feet have not faltered. I call upon you, for you will answer me, O God. Incline your ear to me. Hear my word. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. But I, in justice, shall behold your face. On waking, I shall be content in your presence. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. 
Glory to you, O Lord. While people were listening to Jesus speak, he proceeded to tell a parable because he was near Jerusalem. And they thought that the kingdom of God would appear there immediately. So he said, A noble man went off to a distant country to obtain the kingship for himself and then to return. He called ten of his servants and gave them ten gold coins and told them, Engage in trade with this until I return. His fellow citizens, however, despised him and sent a delegation after him to announce, We do not want this man to be our king. But when he returned after obtaining the kingship, he had the servants called to whom he had given the money to learn what they had gained by trading. The first came forward and said, Sir, your gold coin has earned ten additional ones. He replied, Well done, good servant. You have been faithful in this very small matter. Take charge of ten cities. Then the second came and reported, Your gold coin, sir, has earned five more. And to this servant, too, he said, You take charge of five cities. Then the other servant came and said, Sir, here is your gold coin. I kept it stored away in a handkerchief, for I was afraid of you, because you are a demanding man. You take up what you did not lay down, and you harvest what you did not plant. He said to him, With your own words I shall condemn you, you wicked servant. You knew I was a demanding man, taking up what I did not lay down, and harvesting what I did not plant. Why did you not put my money in a bank? Then on my return, I would have collected it with interest. And to those standing by, he said, Take the gold coin from him and gave it to the servant who has ten. But they said to him, Sir, he has ten gold coins. He replied, I tell you, to everyone who has, more will be given. But for those, the one, or but from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. Or as for those enemies of mine who did not want me as their king, bring them here and slay them before me. After he had said this, he proceeded on his journey up to Jerusalem. My sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Good morning po sa inyong lahat. Reflecting on our readings today, particularly the lengthy Gospel, once again, about the parable of the talents that our Lord shared to us, I reminded the very message that is as old as time. Yung po yung command ng ating Panginoon. Go and multiply. Although these words is, are usually associated with procreation, go and multiply, I believe also applies 
to our God-given abilities and talents. My dear brothers and sisters, God has given us the gifts of life, time, faith, and He calls us to put them to good use and in the process develop them further. They are not to be kept hidden talents. Otherwise, we would be like a car na yung transmission naka-stuck lang sa neutral. Maganda yung motor powerfully. Maganda yung lights, radio, at busina. All are working great. Tires are good. But the problem is, it is not going anywhere. The third servant in the parable is similar. He had the talent. He had the blessing of the master. He had the opportunity. And he had the potential but never move over to producing. He never shifted the gear to drive. You know, reflecting on this, I remember the story of Martha Berry, a good lady who wanted to build a school for the poor children. When she asked the advice of her friends, families, diniscarried siya. Kasi sabi, wala ka namang pera. Wala po tayong pera. Wala kang building. Wala kang mga libro or other materials to start. Kaya din iskerit sila si Martha Berry na magtayo ng isang skwelahan para sa mga batang mahihirap. But when she learned that an automobile magnate is generous and donating for charity, pumunta po siya sa sikat na may multimillionaire na ito. Kilala niyo po kung sino? Si Henry Ford. Pumunta siya. Sinabi niya yung kanyang plano, yung kanyang wish kay Henry Ford. Gusto niya kung ano yung gagawin niya. Alam niyo po siguro si Henry Ford nagkaroon na ng donation patig. Kaya ang ginawa ni Henry Ford after listening to her, tinukot dun sa kanyang pocket ang pera at sinabi, O oh, ayan, yan lang ang laman ng bulsa ko. Take it or leave it. Guro kung tayo po yung nangihingi, baka mainsulto tayo, no? Dahil alam niyo po ba kung ano, magkano ang laman ng bulsa niya that time? Ten cents. Ten cents. But Mar Martha Berry got it and went home to Rome, Georgia. Alam niyo po ang ginawa niya? Binili niya ng mga buto at tinanim niya. After a year, bumalik siya kay Ford and showed the multimillionaire the pictures of her gardens, crops, and trees she planted. Pagkakita ni Henry Ford 
na-impress siya. He gave Barry $25,000 on the spot. And unheard of unfortune in that day. The automobile magnate went on to partner to her and to build the Ford Building's cluster of Gothic edifices on the campus. And the Ford Foundation consequently gave Martha Berry a 9.4 million grant. My dear brothers and sisters, the very message of the story and the gospel today is God has given us good talents, abilities, and capabilities. Wag natin sayangin. Wag natin itago. Gamitin natin. We are given different capabilities, but the effort we put in is the one that makes a difference. Go and multiply. That is the command from our Lord. Because when we grow personally through the talents that God has given us, it will not only benefit us personally, but the community, our family, the church, and helping Christ in his mission to build and spread the kingdom of God. Go and multiply. Please stand. Gathered together as sons and daughters of God, the Father, who is the giver of all good things, we reverently make our prayer. Father of goodness, bless us. Father of goodness, bless us. That the church may not be afraid of the challenge of renewal, and may the many different gifts entrusted to her be put to fruitful use. Let us pray to the Lord. Father of goodness, bless us, that all people may share in the earth's resources in justice, unity, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Father of goodness, bless us, that we may have a deeper appreciation of the importance of our ordinary lives and that we may realize how the love of God can flow from our little acts of kindness. Let us pray to the Lord. Father of goodness, bless us, that doctors, nurses, and those in the caring profession may use their gifts to bring Christ's love and compassion to the poor, the lonely, the sick, and the imprisoned. Let us pray to the Lord. Father of goodness, bless us, that the blessed dead may join the Master's eternal happiness. Let us pray to the Lord. Father of goodness, bless us. Heavenly Father, help us to remain faithful in the small things of life so that we may be trusted with greater things when we come into your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Please stand. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. May the offerings we bring in celebration of Blessed Saint Cecilia be in your gracious acceptance, O Lord, we pray. Just as the struggle of her suffering and passion was pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyr, Saint Cecilia, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength, to bear you witness to Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, the skips we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep into the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Cecilia, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, 
and with Him and in Him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you all. Peace be with you. Lamb of God. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Friends, this is Jesus, our Savior, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to receive him. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Please stand. Let us pray. O God who bestowed on blessed Saint Cecilia a crown among the saints, for her twofold triumph of virginity and martyrdom, grant, we pray, through the power of this sacrament, that bravely overcoming every evil, we may attain the glory of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Once again, we invite everyone with our uh, the healing rosary for the world tonight at 9 p.m., will be hosted by the community of the Santa Cecilia Parish in Palanan City in Nueva Ecija. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.